Why does continuous improvement matter in any field of work or learning? It's a question that deserves attention. See, in a world that's constantly evolving, staying stagnant is not an option. In this video, we discuss how plus delta debriefing can facilitate change. Be sure to hang out until the end of the video for some plus delta debriefing best practices. Whether you're an educator, a student, a professional, or a lifelong learner, the pursuit of continuous improvement is the key to success. In every endeavor, there's always room to grow, to enhance, to refine. Every day is an opportunity to improve. This is achievable through cultivating a growth mindset, promoting accountability, and improving communication. A practical approach is the plus delta debriefing. It supports discussion about successes and challenges. The plus delta debriefing method is a simple and effective tool for facilitating this continuous improvement. So what exactly is plus delta debriefing, you may ask? It's a simple yet powerful tool for reflection and feedback. This methodology is composed of two primary components, pluses and deltas. Let's start with pluses. These are the elements that worked well and that we would like to do again or even better. These could be successful strategies, effective interactions, or particular moments of insight. Pluses are all about recognizing what's working and amplifying it. Now, on to deltas. Deltas are the areas of potential change or improvement. They are not about pointing out failures, but rather identifying opportunities for growth and development. They highlight what we could improve or change in the future to make our efforts even more effective. So pluses are our do-against or do-betters, and deltas are our plus changes or opportunities for improvement. Understanding these two components allows us to grasp the full potential of plus delta debriefing. Like any technique, plus delta debriefing holds both pros and cons. Let's commence with exploring the merits of this strategy. The plus delta debriefing technique cultivates an attitude of constant growth. It stimulates individuals to pinpoint success and failure, presenting chances for learning and expansion rather than focusing on setbacks. This process of reflection further endorses responsibility. When you invest the time to scrutinize your actions and the results, you take ownership of your part in the scenario. The plus delta technique also boosts communication. By offering a systematized layout for feedback, it assists individuals in voicing their thoughts more succinctly and constructively. Moreover, it spurs ongoing amelioration. Accentuating the pluses strengthens good habits, while indicating the deltas brings to light areas for development. However, like every instrument, plus delta debriefing is not devoid of possible disadvantages. One such disadvantage is subjectivity. As humans, our perceptions are tainted by our personal biases and experiences. This influences how we decipher and reply to situations, potentially resulting in feedback that leans more towards subjectivity than objectivity. Besides, there's a risk of laying too much emphasis on negatives. The delta segment of the debriefing could unintentionally become the focal point, obscuring the positives. This might instigate a negative environment and dispirit individuals. Hence, while the plus delta debriefing technique has many merits, it's crucial to be cautious of such potential pitfalls. Diligent facilitation is the key to ensure that the procedure remains balanced and constructive, laying equal stress on both the pluses and the deltas. At its core, the plus delta debriefing technique is a potent instrument for nurturing a culture of ongoing improvement. It incites reflection, endorses responsibility, boosts communication, and provides a straightforward route for growth. However, it's vital to comprehend its constraints and possible disadvantages, ensuring that the strategy is applied considerately and proficiently. It's crucial to be familiar with both the fortes and frailties of plus delta debriefing to employ it effectually. However, like any technique, there can be pitfalls when employing plus delta debriefing. Laying too much stress on the negatives, deltas, can dissuade participation. Strive for a balance between pluses and deltas and present feedback as opportunities for amelioration. Reluctance to change can impede the effectiveness of the debriefing. Stimulate an open attitude and cultivate a secure and supportive atmosphere. Disengagement can occur if feedback is not valued or acted upon. Guarantee that feedback is actionable and communicate follow-up actions effectually. Being aware of these pitfalls and how to steer through them can ensure your plus-delta debriefing sessions are as productive and supportive as possible. 
The success of Plus Delta Debriefing heavily depends on the readiness of the learners and the goals set. The willingness of learners to grow and improve is a cornerstone of this method. Open-minded participants who are eager to learn from their successes and failures drive the process forward. But it's not just about the learners themselves. The environment plays a significant role too. A nurturing, supportive space where everyone feels comfortable sharing feedback is essential. This makes it easier for individuals to voice their thoughts and ideas without fear of judgment. Now let's talk about goals. The process of reflection is not just about looking back, but also about looking forward. It's about setting clear objectives, enhancing decision-making, and building self-awareness. It's about learning from experience and using that knowledge to fuel future success. Setting the right atmosphere and clear objectives is crucial to the success of PLUS Delta Debriefing. The PLUS Delta Debriefing method has a rich history and requires ethical considerations. As we delve into the annals of time, we find the roots of PLUS Delta Debriefing method nestled within the realms of education, project management, and quality improvement. It has evolved over decades, serving as a beacon of reflection and feedback. This method has long been a tool for educators to promote growth mindset, foster accountability, and drive continuous improvement. Simultaneously, it has been used by project managers to evaluate project performance and in quality improvement initiatives to identify areas of excellence and those needing change. Moving on to the ethical considerations, it's crucial to remember that while the plus delta debriefing is a tool for improvement, it should never be a weapon for personal criticism. Constructive criticism is the key. It's the responsibility of those giving feedback to ensure their comments are respectful, fair, and improvement focused. It's about creating a psychologically safe environment where individuals can share their pluses and deltas without fear of judgment or retribution. As we navigate the waters of plus delta debriefing, let's touch upon some best practices that can help steer our ship. One of the most essential is facilitating discussions that encourage participation and make feedback actionable. This involves framing questions and prompts in a way that encourages constructive feedback and minimizes defensiveness. It's also about setting clear expectations and goals for the debriefing process, ensuring participants understand the purpose and potential outcomes. Plus, Delta Debriefing is more than a feedback tool. It's a medium for team building and collaboration. It fosters a culture of continuous improvement where everyone is a part of the journey towards excellence. Therefore, using this method effectively can lead to not just better performance, but also a more cohesive, understanding and empathetic team. Adhering to ethical practices and following proven strategies can greatly enhance the effectiveness of Plus Delta Debriefing. So let's embrace this method with open arms, ready to learn, ready to improve, and ready to excel. Please subscribe and here is another video you might find interesting.